Well, very good morning uh, to everybody here in the auditorium and joining us online. Uh, my name is Russell Howarth. I'm the CEO of Nominet. And I think it's great that we're all assembled here today for the UK IGF. It's great to see so many familiar faces and uh, hopefully we'll get an opportunity to catch up with those who have not met uh, during the break. Now, he may have died before digital devices or the challenges of cybersecurity, but Mahatma Gandhi had it right when he said, the future depends on what we do today. Rhetoric is one thing, but preparation and collaboration are vital to realize the future of what we want for our country. If we want to be a digital leader in the years ahead, we need to start to work now. But we need to be clear where we're headed and how we can make that happen. Now let me paint a picture of two potential scenarios, one of which is characterized by the future of the internet that's both ambitious and opportunistic, uh, where we pursue a very ambitious digital agenda. The other scenario is more of a kind of laissez-faire approach to the internet of tomorrow. And so let's take the, the last scenario and, and really look at that under the context of a, a scenario that's influenced by AI. In this particular version of a dystopian future, we have a lost generation of those who saw as digital natives have now lost their way. Cities are packed with people who are great consumers but lack digital skills. And they find it hard to find meaning in the future digital world. They've lost their jobs to intelligent machines and people are trapped uh, in an existence where self-learning algorithms make decisions from what jobs they get, who gets a loan, who gets injured by an autonomous vehicle. Now, meanwhile, those living in rural areas are still the digital second-class citizens, still waiting for the promise of technology to arrive. They're unable to see a virtual doctor or access critical learning resources that multiple career changes necessitate. These people, these people fall in the cracks of the future digital infrastructure. But what about the other spectrum? The other end of the spectrum here is where we engage in a future as a UK, and the UK is the beginning and the center of the pulsing international investment in technology. The country is well connected to 5G and ultra-fast broadband. People have adapted to the new normal and performing better alongside algorithmic uh, machines, algorithmic algorithms and intelligent machines. Our cities are both smart and that technology helps with, uh, improve the environmental impact. And those living in rural communities are connected. In this scenario, we have a world-class research and development. We breed innovation at the same speed as Silicon Valley. And we have a strong stable of British unicorns. AI has ushered in the next industrial revolution. We are, we are in the UK, a center for global robotics. And the circumstances of your birth have not precluded you from making your way in the digital Britain. Life involves less work, more fun, we are happier, we are safer and securer. Now, of course, neither of these two extremes are going to be the reality. Um, but why not aim high? And we're here today to think about that future and what we can do to influence the right outcomes for our country. With Brexit as a sword of Damocles over our economy, we're all aware of the potential downside that uh, that could have on our economy. And so we have an opportunity to use technology to influence our future and create a vibrant digital economy. But what's important here is the blend, the economy and society, the head and the heart. It's not just enough to be connected. Everybody needs to be connected. Everybody needs to be inclusive. And everybody needs to be secure. So far, so good, you might say. But shaping a digital future is what we're here to discuss. And today's event coincides with 
our own ambitious projects to convene discussions on what matters most in the future of the UK's digital economy. Our view is rooted in the ambition that is scalable and what we need to do needs to be ambitious. Our priorities need to be clear and importantly, what gets measured gets done. Now we recently commissioned some research to look at these aims and ask the question of how you measure the progress for a vibrant digital future in the UK. We looked into 20 different metrics that could help judge whether we're on the right course to realize a UK that's on the top of its digital game. And some of the findings that came from that were quite alarming. STEM skills are very low and narrow to a very small community. There is lack of real digital skills at the top of many of our organizations. To pull out of a couple of statistics, um, only 2% of the FTSE 350 have CTOs or CIOs on their boards. And when we look at the entrepreneurial environment in the UK tech sector, only 25% of 215,000 companies employ people. So we have some real systemic challenges as we look to the era. So the question is, is this a country ready to take full advantage of the fourth industrial revolution that's ushered in through IoT and AI? Now our research also discovered that when faced with some simple challenges, 42% of the UK population are not digitally savvy. This is defined by a range of activities that would come normal to many of us in the room. Research also found that 2.9 million UK firms suffered, suffered cyber security breaches over the last year at a cost of over 29 billion pounds. This is big business and serious money. And as we are increasingly connecting our world to turn everything digital, risk comes hand in hand. But hand wringing without action is a wasted effort and it's only one side of the story. So again, looking at our research, what we've also found is that 20% of the population are ready to be driven by autonomous cars in the next five years. Over the same time frame, a similar proportion of people are ready to be operated on by a robot. And when you consider that those two things, particularly given that none of those technologies are mature, the sentiment is that the UK is, a, is up for the challenge, is ready to embrace a vibrant digital future. That's all very well, but that only works if trust is not broken. And ensuring that we have a strong cyber security culture is absolutely vital to make sure that, that trust is not broken. And that's the reason why it features so heavily at the UK IGF. At Nominet, you may know that we're responsible for keeping the .UK infrastructure safe and secure from a myriad of threats, but we're also involved in developing cybersecurity tools uh, that we sell to both enterprises and to keep the UK government safe and secure via its public sector network. We're also working on a range of skills to try and ensure that we are developing projects that improve inclusivity and skills across a broad spectrum of the UK society. Teaching STEM skills is important, but technical skills must be developed alongside the ability to make sense of the world. Our children need to be equipped with critical thinking skills to navigate the jungle of the digital environment. So I'm looking forward this morning to hear more about the session on fake news, uh, to really understand how we separate the fact from the fiction in an increasingly connected social media world. Now let me be very clear. The cavalry is not coming on this one. This is our challenge. We need to really lead from the front. We must focus on the potential cracks in our digital plan, and we must make a conscious effort to do everything to get everybody along on the digital journey. 
Events such as the UK IGF provide fertile ground for sharing ideas and developing action plans. And the time to think about the ethics of the internet is today. So let's aim high. Let's set ourselves the goal of making the UK a digital leader in the years ahead and a role model for our friends overseas. The future depends on what we do today. Let's start that journey to create the digital future we want for the UK. Thank you very much.